Hi, and welcome to the EBS 50 tutorials. My name is Jorgen Roderhuis. I'm one of the developers of the ESL server software. And in this episode, we're going to talk about base stations. First off, what is a base station? Well, the ESLs in the store are what we are managing with the ESL server software. It's in the name. But as you can see, these units don't have any wires connected to them. Instead, they use a wireless protocol, a low power protocol that allows these units to run on batteries for many years. And those wireless communications are provided through what we call a base station. Basically an access point for the communications between the base station and the labels. And when you have an EBS 50, and you go to the uh, interface and the base stations page, you'll see that there is one EBS50 permanently connected to the system. Now, the base station part of the EBS50 is quite obvious. These antenna are what communicate through the low power protocol with the labels in the store. But as with all other wireless uh, communications, there is of course a certain amount of range that they have for reliant communications. If you get out of range or if there's a lot of concrete or steel in the area, you can have issues with connectivity. So you want to extend the range. Well, the EBS 50 is what we call a smart base station. It's got a Linux computer on board and a base station. So it's do doing all of the brain work to create images for the ESLs, and it's also doing the communications. But if you want to extend the range, then we've got an old familiar, the EBS-40. The EBS-40 is also a base station, but it lacks the internal computer. Basically what it does is it connects through power and an ethernet cable to your network, and it communicates with the ESL server through this cable, and it communicates with the labels through these antennas. And this allows us to extend the range of the EBS50 while making sure that there's only one driver behind the wheel, which is the ESL server application running on the EBS50. Now, once we connected the EBS40 to the network, it's as easy as clicking search base station. And this will start sending out a search package on the network. And it's seeing a couple of units. And we can say, for instance, I want to add this base station to my list. 0C74. It's an EBS40. It's on this IP address. But this discovery of units is basically only possible if your network allows it. So if you have uh, a more closed off network, what you need to do is manually add the base station. So let's just uh, copy this IP address. and Let's disconnect for a second here. And if we now say, I want to manually add a base station and we paste the existing IP address that we know that the unit is on, Port 1002 is the default for EBS40s. And of course we need to say that this is an EBS40 variant. And we click add. And that is all the information that the ESL server software needs to be able to communicate with that base station. So you can see we're connected. The number of ESLs is rapidly rising while it's uh, ascertaining the health of that system. But as you can see, this base station is on channel 11, and this base station is on channel 11. And as with any other wireless protocol, having two uh, transmitters in the same channel will cause collisions. So we don't want to do that. We want to change the channel. By default, our ESLs communicate on the channels 11, 15, 20, 25, and 26. So which one to choose? Well, there's a tool for that too. We call it the energy scan. You go to base stations, energy scan, and this opens up a new page. And we can say, well, I want to keep the EBS 50 on the channel it was already on, but I want to change the one that EBS 40 is on. And I want to know 
how the status is on every channel with that device. So we can say start the scan and we can see the amount of energy that is present on every channel that the ESL, uh, that the EBS can operate on. Like I said, the base stations uh, usually communicate through channels 11, 15, 20, 25 and 26. And there is an intermittent spike on 11 and a pretty uh, consistent one on 12. And since there's a little bit of overlap with adjacent channels, we don't want to use 11. Plus, we try to move away from 11, so that's out of the question already. There's quite a lot of traffic on 16 and on 15. We see a constant amount of energy on 20, but only very little on 25 and 26. So, let's go back to the base stations and let's change the channel. So, as we can see, it's now saying that the status of the base station is that it is energy scanning. But we've decided we want to change it to channel 25. So we press the configure button. We can change the name or the LAN ID, the PAN ID, any of the settings of the device. But the one we're interested in right now is the channel. And we say we want to go to channel 25. We press the save button. The unit disconnects for a second while it's processing the uh, new information that it needs to use. And once it boots the hardware back up, it will go back to connect it. And now we've got two base stations on different channels that will not interfere one another in the radio space we have here. So that in a nutshell is what EBSs are, how to use them, how to manage them, and how to make sure you get the most out of your communications. Thank you for watching this episode. There are other episodes available as well. You can check the description for the link to the playlist. If you are interested in these products or if you have further questions, you can contact Opticon. All of our contact information is in the description as well. Thank you for watching. See you next time.